Welcome to Freezer Meals 101. I'm Sharla. And I'm Christy. Today we are talking about dump and go recipes that are just for chicken. This is going to be for when chicken's on sale. Because that's that's, that's yeah. the idea. When you see a really, okay, listen, groceries are getting expensive. I don't know if you've noticed, but we have noticed. And it's happening everywhere. So everybody can benefit from a sale. Everybody should have something, should have a game plan. Yeah. When you, when you walk through the store and you're like, hey, wait a minute, that chicken is outrageously on sale. I'm going to buy it all, not all. You want to be nice to the other people, but seriously, fill your cart. Fill like, your cart yeah. with the chicken. And then you're like, what am I going to do? Most people just go home and stick it in our freezer. And then that's where and good intentions go home to die. Yes, they it's do. Like, it's kind of like the spinach in your crisper. <laughs> so we have a plan for you and it is freezer meals. So because then <laughs> instead of it going freezer burnt because you don't have any marinade on it, you don't have any, you know, whatever. And it's like in the wrong packaging. Yeah. This lasts at least three months. Some a lot longer. But Easily get, six. You know, and here you're going to use everything you made because you've got the meal. And some of the ones we're going to be sharing with you today, like these are all just dump them, in, dump it in your bag. But some of them have vegetables in there. Mm -hmm. They're more of like a full meal. And so we can show you like how versatile chicken can be. Yeah, it really can. There is yeah. a lot of great different things that we're doing here today. This is not all just chicken and a marinade and you have to make a side dish and like all the things. We do have some of those today. Yeah, absolutely. But, and a lot of people think of freezer meals and they're like, oh, it's just casseroles or oh, it's just adding soup to stuff. Not our freezer meals. No. No. We've got great stuff. And we've also designed today so that these recipes are not only fast to assemble, and if you can get your chicken on sale, they're fat. It's like you working with one protein at a time is the fastest. Yes. Because you're gonna lay out all your bags, fill them all with the chicken, and then start dumping the other ingredients in there. Because you're gonna spend a bit of time doing some prep. Yeah. You're gonna have to chop an onion or two. We're not coming to your house to do it for you. <laughs> we are. We are not the freezer meal fairies, although we've been called that. Oh yes, that's one of my favorite titles. Freezer and meal so, fairies. And so, but these all also go in your crock pot. Uh, so so it, nice. it just makes it so easy. And on the days you have to get to soccer practice, piano lessons, all the things, or if you're at work all day, mm -hmm. you're going to be coming home, then you can, like, as soon as you open the door, you can smell it and you know, like, dinner's already ma made. And you didn't even have to think about it because it no. was in your freezer. Pull it out. You went to work, you came back, and, you, and it's ready. Dinner was done. We're really excited to share these with you today and we're gonna get to the first one. We have a lot today, so we gotta roll through these, right? <laughs> yes, we have a tendency to be a little chatty and we're still gonna be chatty today. You're not we gonna be, promise we, we can't be. We meander. But we do because we're doing eight different recipes today. So that's a lot. So we're gonna show you, like we're just gonna get to it now. So the first one is cilantro lime chicken really nice and healthy anything for me if it's got a lot of color in there mm -hmm. then i automatically know that i'm feeding my family healthy because it's got nutrients right absolutely so we've got our boneless skinless chicken breasts in the bag now you can cube these before you put put them in the bag or on the day that you go to serve this you can just have used whole chicken breasts and then you can shred it so it's up to you which you prefer what's easier one is going to be more work on the front end the other is going to be more work on the day you serve it so but you know your life cubing chicken breasts is holding you back from doing freezer meals <laughs> this isn't the maybe well, this is no but i mean you know you know yeah. if you have more time now or I later know. so you choose. Freezer meals are for right? everybody. Yes, they sure are. We can are. find a way to make them for you And too. you get to choose. So then you're going to put in your bag some olive oil, lime juice, some fresh cilantro that's been chopped, garlic that's minced. We use the big jar of minced garlic so it's already done for us because you're making so many meals at a time. You might as well. Um, then we're going to do some black beans that are drained and rinsed, 
kernel corn that's drained, a purple onion that's minced, so you get another color in there, which is beautiful, some chipotle spice, and salt and pepper. You're gonna mix that all together in your bag. Try to get out as much air as you possibly can because in freezer cooking, air is what causes your freezer burn, so we avoid that. And then you're just gonna lay it flat to freeze. On the day you go to cook this, you're gonna throw it into your slow cooker. You're gonna cook it on high for four to five hours. And then at the end, if it's not cubed already, you're gonna shred it. You're gonna serve it on flour tortillas with salsa, sour cream, guacamole, whatever other kind of fixings that you like, or you can make this in the oven, bake it covered for an hour. Awesome, and it is so delicious. The next one is barbecue shredded chicken. We do like to do this one a lot because it's very simple, literally dump and go. Uh, you start it with your chicken breasts. You can do chicken thighs if you'd like as well. You're gonna shred these at the end, so nobody will really know either way. Um, you're gonna add in some finely minced onion, your garlic that's been minced, again, we use the jar, your barbecue sauce, and your apple cider vinegar. Now, when you use pretty much an entire barbecue sauce bottle, sometimes you get that, you know, you gotta stand there for an hour holding it upside down to get the last drips out of it. You can take that apple cider vinegar and pour it inside your barbecue sauce bottle put the lid back on and shake it up and then pour it in and you get the last bit of your barbecue sauce. We do not like waste here <laughs> and, uh, and we want you to have the full effect of your meal. So you're gonna put all these together and just like the cilantro lime chicken, get rid of your air, lay it flat to freeze, seal it up nice. And then on the day of, you can do this one in the slow cooker and then you shred when it's done and we recommend that you serve this with coleslaw because it gives it a little bit of texture, a little bit of crunch, and a, a garlic mayo. It's really just some mayonnaise, you plop a bit of garlic in there, a little squirt of some lemon juice and a little pepper, a little salt and pepper maybe, and let it sit for a bit, before, well, make it while you've got this in the slow cooker, and it is so nice to put on the bun. You could toast the bun. Mm. Uh, there's really a lot of ways to enjoy this, but it is a hit every time. Okay, before we get into the next one, because the next one does have a little bit more prep to it, don't be scared. It's not a lot of prep and it's really simple prep. It's simple prep. It's like you're slicing your red peppers, your, you know, that kind of thing. But we wanted to suggest that if you're gonna do these, especially for ones that you know you or your family is going to love, double them. Absolutely. when you're doing your prep especially, it doesn't take a whole lot more time. Christy always is like, if you're gonna chop one onion, you might as well chop two. And she's Absolutely. so right. Yep. And so for this one, we are gonna do a bit of prep before so that we can just toss everything in the bag. But I'm just gonna recommend that if you're gonna prep these things anyway, if this is a recipe that you know you're gonna love, then just make two. Just make two. In fact, if you are starting to make freezer meals for the first time, that's what we recommend to everybody. Just start by doubling. You're making one for your supper. It doesn't take really hardly any extra more time to make a second one in, right in the bag with the sauce, and then you can freeze that one. And that's a supper that you don't have to think about later. It is done. And you can just slowly build yeah. up, right? And if you double your dinner for one week, you will have an entire week that you don't have to cook the next week. Like, that's pretty awesome. It feels really good. And you don't have to go to the grocery store. You don't have to plan. That's the biggest thing. You don't, you don't have, to, have plan. to plan. You don't have to think. We have been doing freezer meals for 11 years together together and we were doing freezer meals before that and i'm her neighbor we, i live down like two houses that way and so when we started to do these together um i don't know where it's going with that oh we make we don't just double we make three months at a time so every yes. three months we get together and we'll do over 100 meals i'm gonna put a video right there to one of our mega sessions where we did make over 100 meals. We have a lot of those. You can check out all of our Every three months over the last 10 years, there's been a lot. We only recently started to film them, but. I think there's at least six mega sessions on our YouTube channel, so you can yep. check that Throw out. Throw it on in the background. You're gonna learn so much about freezer meals. 
we can we can cook with you it's okay we won't come to your house and do it but we'll cook with you all right get to the next one and we you've been prepared that you're gonna have to chop a pepper it's okay <laughs> okay so for this i think a lot of you are gonna feel like it's worth it because oh, yeah. we're making philly chicken sandwiches you know like a philly cheesesteak like that into your bag you've got your four to six boneless skinless chicken breasts now i used three because they were massive they looked like someone had like hormone fed them or something like it was like they were massive chicken breasts so use your judgment <laughs> you know how much your family eats you can clearly see how big the chicken is so you know four to six or three if they're giant chickens then you're gonna add sliced green pepper a sliced red pepper half of an onion that's been sliced seasoning salt and some garlic you're gonna squish that around in your bag to combine it take out the air and seal now in a medium size that's a quart size freezer bag you're going to put eight slices of provolone cheese you can buy it already sliced now when i bought it it had the little papers in between it and so i just kept those there because that's gonna make it easier for me to separate them when I take this out and make this meal. So yeah, I kept the papers in there, why wouldn't I? And um, put that in your medium bag and then you're gonna staple the medium bag onto the large bag above the seal, of course, because you don't wanna cause leaks. And that way, on the day you go to make this, you don't have to go to the store, you don't have to run out to get that provolone cheese because you already have it. Um, you will need some hoagie buns or hot dog buns. Now, you could throw a pack of those in your freezer. I always or, I always have a pack of buns or not yeah. always hoagies, but I almost always have a pack of buns in my freezer because you just never know. Yeah, when you might need them. When you might need them. Yeah. And again, if you find them on sale or whatever, maybe that's the time yep. that you're going to put them in there. But you will need hoagie buns or hot dog buns for the day you go to serve this. Um, you're gonna, again, throw this into your crock pot, cook it on low for four to five hours, and then shred the meat, place all of that filling onto your hoagie roll, top it with that provolone cheese. Now, if you want, you can like broil them really quickly, like for a minute or two, or put them in the microwave just to melt that cheese, but that part's up to you. Yes. I, I'm sent, you can't see me, I'm behind you nodding furiously. Yes, put it under your broiler, <laughs> let it get melty and gooey and Of course crispy. you want it gooey, but I'm not gonna tell you what you should do. You're we, so nice. We prefer the cheese melted. You're but. so nice. <laughs> I put them sometimes right in the oven on a cookie sheet, um, like 10 minutes at 350. Okay. Because it does the same Just thing. Like that. So, they don't get crispy, but they, you know. Um, you can also do that one in the Instant Pot for those of you who love your Instant Pots. It's true. This next recipe is as old as time. Yeah, and, because I had it growing up. And I had never heard of it until I met you, which is really funny. We started making freezer meals together and she's like, let's make chicken hurry. And I'm like, okay, what is that? What is that? <laughs> My mom never made a marinade with the chicken. It was salt and pepper and chicken. And that was it. like, this? And we never had just salt and pepper and chicken. But yeah, isn't yeah. that funny how we grew up differently? So the chicken hurry is so easy. You will have it memorized by the time you've made this 10 times. It's start it with your chicken. You can do thighs or breasts, whatever works best for your family, whatever's on sale that day. Um, it's half a cup of ketchup, quarter cup of water, a quarter cup of brown sugar, and three tablespoons of um, onion soup mix. You can buy the packet. That is three tablespoons, or we buy ours in bulk. It's a little bit cheaper, and we always have some on hand that way. You can get a no MSG dry onion soup mix at Bulk Barn. Yes, you can, because sometimes the MSG, right, it bothers people, some people. Um, so you can do this in the oven. You can do it on the skillet. You can do it in the barbecue, but it's kind of a star in the slow cooker. It is so easy. You set it and forget it, and you can come home. You can have this with rice. You can have this with pasta. You can have this with potatoes. If you are not a carb person, you could have it with the salad. The sauce on this is just 
delicious. I I mean, I get that it has brown sugar and ketchup, yeah. and it's probably not all. Like, it's, it's probably not, not our healthy. healthiest freezer meal. But it's like your kids will eat it you spoon this onto your rice or your yeah. potatoes or whatever and that sauce oh it's good all right the salsa verde chicken tacos see how much variety we've got already already we've already. got like cilantro lime chicken which is you know its own kind of thing and all those colors which i love and then you know, we've got the barbecue shredded chicken, which you serve on buns with the coleslaw. Then we've got mm -hmm. our Philly chicken sandwiches with that provolone the... melted. Yes. And we've got the chicken hurry, which is more of like your chicken, potatoes, veg, like traditional, whatever. Yep. And now we've got chicken tacos. So, oh, so good. And these aren't like your typical chicken tacos either. Like no. it's not like we have a recipe that's ground chicken with taco seasoning. Like, yeah, that's a real thing. But these, it's a, it's a salsa verde, which and again, I had never heard of until I met you. It's like it's a green salsa. Yes. And it's a milder flavor. And it's really runny. And but it's yes, good. it is really runny. But it gets into the chicken. Yeah. In the it's, oh, and, and talk about fast to put together and simple. Oh, it is. So you've got your chicken breasts, your onion uh, that's been diced or minced salsa verde and then some cumin it's mm -hmm. very simple and on the day you go to cook this you can do it in your instant pot or your slow cooker and at the end you're just gonna shred it and then you do the thing where you have it on either crisp shell tacos or your flour tortilla kind of tacos or on nachos, or like whatever form of taco I use, thing. We make this first with the tacos, and it's a fairly big recipe. There's only four in our family. I always have leftovers of it, so I will often make enchiladas. Oh, that should uh, be a really good one. I made this for supper club one time. Very good. We are good. at a supper club together. It's so much fun. Oh, we're going to put a video there. <laughs> we have a video um, about supper club. About like our 70s theme party that yeah. we did for supper club it's pretty fun it's got gross food like i think it's gross but um but 70s you know 70s we food. all dressed up it was really fun and so just i mean that's not a really a freezer meal video it's just like a for fun video but if you're bored <laughs> and you want to know more about supper club go <laughs> check that out uh, but yes but i did serve them one time at supper club and, and i specifically made the chicken just so i could make the enchiladas and i have a homemade sauce it's so good so we have a lot bigger family than Christy does. So what we do with this more often than not is I actually take out the salsa verde chicken tacos on the same night that I take out a regular bag of taco meat from mm -hmm. our freezer. And you make a taco bar. Yeah, they, they can have yeah. whichever. And we have one son that has both. I think it's so gross. Oh, he mixes them together. Like yeah, the chicken on top like, of the beef or whatever. Yeah. I think that's so gross, but he, yeah, and and he's that kid too, who will, who will like take his spaghetti and put it on the garlic on the garlic bread with the Caesar salad underneath, and then is weird. He mixes. I need to do that food. now. I like that one. Oh, he like mixes. Who's oh, that? That one. Oh no, kidding. <laughs> yeah. Oh. And so I could do that. It's like a chip buddy. It's like it's like yeah. when you take like in the UK you have chip buddies, and it's when you take French fries and you stuff them in a hamburger bun and you eat it. Like it's I'm, just there's more to it than that. But, and, yeah, whatever. But yeah, Different strokes so <laughs> so in our family, this so many ways to have the yes. salsa verde. Yeah, there you go. Okay, we're gonna get to the next recipe because we're doing that thing again. We're Sorry. doing the thing. We have lots to say. What can I, what can I say about that? <laughs> Now, not too far of a departure, but this is a soup, chicken taco soup. And the and, flavors are so different. And, and it's the good one because it's the one with the beer. <laughs> right. we have a, we've had tried a few different ones over the years and every time we bring it up that, hey, we should you know make another chicken taco soup, we always say the good one, the with one the with beer. the beer. <laughs> um, so you start out with your chicken breasts. Um, we're gonna shred it at the end so you can put them in whole. You're gonna have add onion, Chili style beans, drained and rinsed black beans, kernel corn that's been drained, tomato sauce. I add the beer at the end, so we'll get to that. 
uh, some diced chilies, some taco seasoning, and then 14 ounces of diced tomatoes. And it's starting to get pretty tipsy, uh, tipsy because of the beer, I'm joking. <laughs> it's starting to get a little tacoly by this point. And so you just kind of have to resettle your bag a little bit. Or and, and you it'll put stand it in up, a container. Or you put it in a container or, or a juice jar. Or to come and hold it. I will tell the story. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. It's so true. It's so funny. So, I hope you keep that a little bit. That's kind of funny. <laughs> or you can get a friend to help you. And that's why you should do freezing meals with a friend. Or go get your kid. Whatever. And then you add the beer in at the end. You're going to zip it up. Get all that air out of there. Then zip it up. And mix it up nicely. On the day of serving, so here's where the magic happens, in my opinion. You are going to put it in your bowl and then you're gonna plop a little bit of um, sour cream on it and sprinkle some shredded cheddar and maybe some green onions or chives and, and oh, I forgot a part. maybe some tortillas. And maybe some, some crunched up taco chips. Now listen, right now I don't have any chicken broth in this, mm -hmm. but you can add it to make it a little bit more soupy and it'll go a little bit further. And I always do. I really like to add it in. It'll make, it's already a really thick bag. So we don't always add it in at the time. But if you are not the kind of person to have extra chicken broth hanging around, just do it now and then it's done and it's in there. But that's optional. You I don't, don't have to put it fit. in there. It's pretty tight, isn't it's it? It's so big. Yeah. So one thing that we forgot to mention in the beginning of this video is you know how we were talking about how you're at the grocery store and you see this like amazing sale on chicken. Mm -hmm. Well, you might not have this massive repertoire of freezer meal recipes. So you might not know off the top of your head how you can make, you know, 20, 30, 40, 50 different right. chicken meals. But we have this one. is where <laughs> if you want, you can come to the Freezer Meals 101 Club. We'll put the link in the description below. And you just click the button that says chicken and it'll populate all the chicken recipes. Mm -hmm. And that way, whatever it is that's on sale, you can either hit the button if it's a protein or if you found a sale on something random, you just type it into the ingredient thingamabobber there and it'll populate all the recipes with that. So. It'll also generate your shopping list and blah, 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 lots of other things. But I wanted to let you know about that feature so that you know that that's where you could find a whole whack of chicken recipes, even more, way more. Way more than this. Here. Yeah. But this is a little sampling. So this next one is pineapple teriyaki chicken. Talk about variety because mm -hmm. this is one where you are gonna cube your chicken breasts for this one. And then you're gonna add some teriyaki sauce, water, brown sugar, and garlic. But then you're gonna add some carrots, pineapple chunks, red pepper, green pepper, and some sliced water chestnuts. They make such a great crunch. They never go soft. Oh, it's so good. Yeah, it's so nice to have them in there. And, and even in the slow cooker, they never... Uh, yes. Yeah, and then they stay crunchy. For this, this had, like, this is one that is perfect for serving on rice. And you have all the vegetables and even a fruit already yeah, right. in there. And so you can, you've got your full meal other than, you know, you want to whip up a little bit of rice or maybe some pasta. Or, like, but really it should be rice. <laughs> Not to tell you what to do, but really, this one belongs on rice. It's so. Got an, it's teriyaki. Like, it's an Asian flavor. Yeah. Have rice. <laughs> Have rice. You've got water chestnuts. Should go with rice. And, uh, you know, cook it in your slow cooker. You can do this one in the oven if you prefer, if it's that kind of night where you don't have all day to put it in your slow cooker. Mm -hmm. And that's it. That's super easy and super delicious. This last one is Easy Crock Pot Chicken Cacciatore. Chicken cacciatore is one of those ones that sounds like it's a lot of work, but it does not have to be. So this one, you want to start out with boneless, skinless chicken breasts. You can do it you with thighs. You can do this with thighs. Absolutely, yep. you could. We're going to add in 24 ounces of pasta sauce. It could be your any old jarred sauce you want. We have a red sauce in the club that we really like to use in place of pasta sauce. 
one zucchini coarsely chopped, three quarters of a cup of chopped onion, and some Italian seasoning, and that's it. Plunk it all in your bag, mix it around, zip it up, and when you go to cook it, super easy in your slow cooker, and I think it's something you probably want to eat with noodles. It's got an Italian flair. I think it's intended to go with potato. Definitely with over pasta. Over pasta, yeah. for sure. And a sprinkling of Parmesan and some red chili oh, flakes. Oh, yeah. yeah. No, this really dresses up nicely. And again, more variety. More variety. Because you've got kind of an Italian bit there. The Asian bits, the, and we have it all. And obviously the um, Mexican or Southwest inspired with the chicken taco soup and the salsa verde tacos. Yeah, kind of have everything. We kind of have a little bit of, we don't have an Indian meal in there. No, we don't, we do in the club, but. Yeah, we do. <laughs> <laughs> so to recap, because that was a lot of recipes. That was a lot of recipes. Chicken doesn't have to be boring. If you're able to get chicken on sale, you can take advantage of the sales by using freezer cooking. Absolutely. Because these will last three to six months in your freezer. You should double these, because there was eight recipes here today. If you doubled them, you would have 16. And that's like over two weeks of not having to think about what to make for supper. And then if there's a beef sale, the next oh, week, right? You and do it again with oh, the beef. Oh, I'm gonna put a video right there mm -hmm. of 11 different beef recipes. We have another one that has like nine beef recipes. And this so is ground beef, ground right? Beef, sorry. You know, sometimes the sale on that is like primo and you just... And we had the sale on the beef, beef strips, strips, two for one. And so we also have a video on that. I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna leave you alone about the videos. You don't have to, to watch them all, but... You should watch them all. <laughs> But if, but if you're looking, you can, you know, you can look on our channel if there's something specific like beef strips or ground beef or whatever that you're looking for or vegetarian, all the- More we, crock pot <laughs> recipes. We have it all. We have, we have it all. We've got you covered. So yeah, to recap the, yeah, and do one protein at a time is faster. And- If you're gonna chop one onion, chop two. So yeah, that's- <laughs> Those are our tips for the day. That's about it. And thanks for joining us. It was really fun. We'll see you next Happy time. Happy cooking.